This video is also sponsored by Blockstrade. Coming in number one is going to be the two-time EXP code. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because Rip Indra just posted a new code on his Twitter account for the Easter update. As you progress through Blockstrade, you will find that the grind will become much, much slower and more demanding, especially when you reach second and third stage. This can be a frustrating experience and it can take longer to level up and progress through the game. Thankfully, the game offers a solution in the form of two-time EXP code. By using this feature, you can double the amount of experience points you receive for completing quests, tasks, and defeating enemies. This results in a faster leveling process, making it easier and more enjoyable to progress through the game. Without it, well, you can only level up one at a time which can be tiresome and less fun over time so make sure to take advantage of those exp code many players believe that you can only purchase them with robux but there are several ways to obtain them for free furthermore once you reach the second stage you can trade devil fruits for two-time exp code this is another excellent way to obtain two-time exp code tip number two is something that many people already know but if you're new to the game it is important to learn when you're trying to level up your character by fighting enemies, you can avoid taking damage from them if you have elemental devil fruits. These fruits allow you to control different elements like fire or light, and they also give you the special ability to be immune to enemies that are weaker than you. And to find out if a devil fruit is an elemental type, you can just go and talk to a block fruit dealer. In my opinion, the best devil fruit for grinding in the first seed are going to be magma and light because they do a lot of damage and are easy to use. But don't worry, any elemental or logia devil fruit will make you immune to enemies so just choose the one that you like the most tip number three when you join a public server you're likely to encounter a lot of players which can be a good thing because you know you can always team up and you know make friends and stuff but it can be super frustrating as some players can be really annoying making it challenging for you to complete tasks or level up to avoid this you can utilize free private server the idea is to join servers with fewer players which reduces the chances of encountering players who may interfere with your gameplay or even attack you you can pretty much join servers that that are specifically designed for certain tasks such as just grinding for items looking for devil fruit etc there are servers that are less crowded and more peaceful allowing you to enjoy the game without anyone trying to kill you there are several ways to access these private servers for free in the video description, you can find a link to second and third seed private server. These links are typically updated regularly, ensuring that you always have access to the latest private server. So if you're a new player, make sure to utilize this technique to your advantage. Today's sponsor is Blocks Trade, which aims to simplify the trading experience for you in various Roblox games, including Blocks Fruit. Let me demonstrate how it works. First, select an offer that interests you and click on it. Then, click on make an offer and add the fruits or items that you want to offer. After that, hit submit and your offer will be displayed. If you want to create your own post, click on create trade, select blocks fruit, choose a fruit or items you want to trade, and click on confirm. The process is straightforward and user friendly, so be sure to check out the link in the description for more information. Tip number four, when grinding levels or items, it is always better to have a fast fighting style, meaning a fighting style with quick and one speed. The two fastest ones are water kung fu, which you can obtain for 500k, Dali, and sharksman karate which is the best one and can be obtained in second seed. Both of these fighting styles have really quick attack speed which can speed up the grinding process. Since they have no end leg, you can pair them up with Buddha fruit and grind for fragments, kill bosses, or even participate in PvP battles. I recommend unlocking both of these fighting styles so you can use them to grind effectively. Coming in at number 5 is going to be wall tricking. This technique is especially useful for new players who are struggling to obtain elemental fruit early on in the game. Here's how it works. Pretty much if there's a wall nearby, you can position yourself on the opposite side of the wall from the NPC. This way, they won't be able to damage you, but you can still use your weapon and skill to inflict damage on the NPC. If you're level 1 and new to the game, you can use the 2x EXP code, go to the Fountain Village. From there, you can go to a galley pirate that is behind a wall, attract it towards you, and keep attacking it until it dies. This method can help you easily gain 30 or 40 levels the first time you use it. You can pretty much repeat this process maybe one or two more times before going back to your normal quest. Tip number 6. When starting the game, it is common for new players to spend all of their money on rolling fruits hoping to get better ones. However, this is a big mistake because earning money in the first C is slow. A better strategy is to save up around 1 to 2 million belly and wait for Buddha fruit to be available in stock or whatever fruit that you want. I mentioned Buddha because it is one of the best fruit to level up but and once you have it, the game becomes much easier. Instead of spending all of your money on rolling fruit, it is better to save your money and buy fruits from the block fruit once they become available on stock. This way you have a higher chance of getting the fruit you want without relying on luck. In the second or third C, earning money becomes much easier by killing sea bees. So you could try your luck with rolling fruits at that point, but in the first and first half of the second C, it is recommended to save your money. 
However, if you have Robux, you can buy the 2 times money game pass. And if you already have the fruits you want, there's another tip to consider which I will mention later in this video. Tip number 7 is a common mistake that new players make while grinding. If you're on your first seat and have a good elemental fruit, but then let's say you get lucky and found like a dragon or control, you may think it's a valuable fruit and it's good for grinding. However, that's not the case. Most of the strongest fruit in the game require high mastery making them difficult to grind with. For example, dragon fruits unlock your second skill at level 150 mastery level, which is challenging to achieve. With the release of update 17 part 3, you can now store fruit in the first seed, so I recommend storing these type of fruit and using them when you become stronger to maximize their potential, because they're not going to be useful in the first seed whatsoever. Coming in at number 8 is not exactly an endgame tip, but it's incredibly useful for learning about the game. I will link a website in the description called the Blocks Fruit Wiki. This website has almost everything you need to know about the game including level guides, tips, weapons, fighting styles, guns, and more. This is not only helpful for beginning, but also for higher level players. Whenever there's an update, you can find everything that's released on the wiki, making it a valuable resource for staying up to date on the game. Next up is the Buddha glitch coming in at number 9. A lot of players use fruits like Light and Magma to grind level, which is not bad, but the best fruit for grinding is Buddha. Due to its incredible transformation range, you do not have to awaken Buddha, but doing so will make it even more powerful. With an awakened Buddha, you can hit NPCs without them even touching you. You can use it to defeat like literally almost anything in the game. And after update 17, you can actually take advantage of the Buddha transformation glitch. And the reason why this glitch is so powerful Powerful in block shoot is because your M1 speed are gonna be significantly faster. It's gonna be much harder for the NPCs to hit you, making it super easy to grind. And even without the Buddha glitch, it's still good for grinding because when you're transformed, you also take 50% less damage. But keep in mind, you can only do this glitch for grinding. If you do it for PvP or bounty hunting, you'll possibly get banned, so do not do it. Tip number 10, I'm going to show you guys how to get full body hockey as quickly as possible. So basically, the more hits you land with your melee sword or gun, the more your hockey improves. And to get full body hockey, you need to make 60,000 hits. There are many ways to achieve this, but I recommend you guys reset your stat and avoid putting any points into melee. Instead, focus on getting hits on the NPC. It is also advised to use like an elemental fruit so that you can leave like an auto clicker on and just go AFK while grinding. This way, you don't have to be actively playing. If you guys have any other recommendation on the best way to grind hockey, feel free to leave a comment down below for others to know. Tip number 11, I'm going to show you guys the quickest way to level up your observation hockey, which will give you more dodges and unlock observation hockey v2. The process is simple. First, find a nearby NPC that only uses M1 attacks so you can dodge all of their moves. After using your observation hockey and it expires, just server hop and rejoin the game, and your dodges will automatically be restored. You can repeat this process endlessly until you achieve 5 5,000 dodgers. I recommend you guys do this outside the upper sky castle so you can keep talking to the NPC and keep track of your dodges. Tip number 12. Now this one is super important if you're looking to maximize your fruit inventory. This tip contradicts tip number 6 but always spin a fruit if you can. That way you can use them to trade for other fruit or game passes. I highly recommend you guys get fruit storage before considering trading for permanent fruit. You're more likely to find success trading with 2 copies of Doe or Leopard. So that's why I always tell people to trade for fruit storages before getting other game passes. Also another thing I want to mention is if you ever come across a rare fruit you already own, try to trade away the one that you already have in your inventory instead of forcing yourself to eat it. And the last secret trick I want to tell you guys is after you subscribe and like the video, roll a fruit and and you will get any fruit you want.